Hello, everyone. My name is Sujin King, and I'm the Senior Events Manager here with the CMX and Bevy team, and welcome to today's masterclass. Uh, we, as a brief introduction, CMX is the largest and most active group of community professionals in the world, and we are here to provide connections and resources for community builders like you. So we have the next 45 minutes together where we'll hear from our speaker on today's topic, where we're also going to hear the best practices from Microsoft's community building hero, Martin Tatar. So after that, we'll close our time with a Q&A. So please check out the Q&A button where you can specifically ask and upvote any questions. And of course, this session will be recorded and posted onto our CMX YouTube channel for all of us to view afterwards. So with that said, I am so happy to introduce today's speaker, Martin, who is a community hero and builder at Microsoft, working with three community three Microsoft communities in the Central and Eastern Europe region. So I'll allow you to share a little bit more about yourself, but please take it away, Martin. Thanks, Sujan, for the nice introduction. You can hear me okay, right? Yes, I can. Great, let me share my screen. Let's get into it. I was hoping to get at least 100 on that tick mark, but I'm sure there will be more joining in and we will also uh, have a recording. So there will be there will be more views on the recording. Let me see. So this should work. Let's see. All right, great. Well, let's get into it. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you to CMX for this invitation and opportunity. My name is Martin Tatar, and today I'll share with you some best practices from me and our community management experience. As Sujan mentioned, please keep uh, the questions coming in the Q&A tab, and we'll leave some time at the end to uh, make sure we get to them. Please be polite and respectful to each other in the chat and maybe just drop down where you're tuning in from if you didn't get a chance and exchange your LinkedIn's uh, connect together as well. Especially if I get boring, then you can uh, start chatting with each other. So let's get into it. As you can see, my official title is business ops program manager, but what it basically means is a tech community builder or in short CPM community program manager. At Microsoft, I work with a beautiful team of people and together we are responsible for numerous communities, um, but the main three ones, MVP, RD, and MLSA. I'll dive into these later as well as what the acronyms mean. But before I do that, did you ever get a chance to ask yourself, what does community mean to you in the sense of you specifically being a community member, not a community professional? So give it some thought. What does it mean to you as someone that's part of some community uh, that I'm sure all of you are locally, you know, regionally, globally, online. Uh, you may have noticed that under the fun fact about me, I mentioned I'm a rock climber and I have been so for many years, more than I can remember now. Why do I bring this up? Because um, throughout my life, I ended up moving a lot, whether it was for work or personal reasons. One thing that I owe is I owe my mental health to climbing. Um, thankfully, uh, it's in a good spot. And I can tell you that every time I entered a climbing gym, I was immediately greeted, welcomed, and included. I felt like I belonged. And it was regardless of you know my looks or background. This is where I got my first taste of what community means to me. The, the climbing family has been my family ever since. And to this day, when I travel, the first thing I seek is a climbing gym. And the reason I bring this up is because at some point, about seven to eight years in my, into my career at Microsoft, I realized what I want to be doing professionally, and that was I want to make others feel the same way I feel when I enter a climbing gym, like I belong somewhere. And so I joined our technical ambassador community team with a grandiose vision and unlimited motivation as any new new uh, new teammate. Little did I know how much there was to be on the other side of actually running a community. So that's a little bit about me. You can add me on LinkedIn by scanning that QR code later looking up my name it's pretty straightforward um happy to be here again today in fact I, every year around new year's i set a new year's resolution list and um you know it's not like let me go to the gym and then i stop going in a week it's more so what do i want to accomplish throughout this year 2023 and one of the top 10 things was speak at cmx and it came true so i'm really excited um my goal for today is for all of us to relate to each other uh, the hope is that we can break the ice, you know, in the chat, the barriers, um, 
And as community professionals, we can come together and learn from each other and inspire each other to keep the motivation high and to form new friendships and move the industry forward, as Luca mentioned in the chat. To give the presentation a flow, I put a structure around these three overarching themes, the Microsoft communities. I'll talk a little bit about the communities I work with. Best practices for continually engaging your community, more so people in process, and then community tools, whether that be Microsoft community tools or community tools you use, it can kind of give you an inspiration or sense of how to use tools. And disclaimer, a lot of these experiences are from are dependent on the type of communities I run and work with. So they might not always be applicable to you. Uh, hey, Romana, good to see you. Um, so before I, I jump in kind of into the first part of the presentation, I want to re reiterate Microsoft's mission, which is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Maybe you weren't aware of the mission, but I think it nicely complements and plays along of us on top of being an enterprise. It ultimately translates to also being a community powered business. So on top of us, you know, delivering products and services to customers and partners, we're also working with the community. We're a community powered business. And I think the mission statement fits that beautifully. Um, last time I checked, there was around 220,000 employees, you know, it goes up and down and more than 50 community programs at Microsoft, all the way from students to Xbox, to LinkedIn, um, to all of our products and services, to our global, large, publicly facing Microsoft tech community website. And the reason I mentioned this is, as you can imagine, with so many community programs, I'm proud to share with you that we have an internal community council and also a global community initiative initiative whose mission is to collaboratively work together, build operational efficiencies, and advance the knowledge and impact of Microsoft's community efforts. And the reason I mention this again is because uh, you may this may not be relevant to all community builders or they not, might not be aware of it, but it is relevant to anyone out there, uh, or should I say any company out there that has two or more community programs in place. You should have this in place because of the following benefits and that are listed out there. And it is a team at Microsoft. It is a team for all who are leading external community efforts and platforms at Microsoft. And we work together to share best practices, collaborate on platforms and leverage each other's work on progress, our programs, campaigns and metrics. And we also operate under the one Microsoft brand identity, which is important. So if any of you are dialed in right now, I want to give a shout, shout out to my teammates and the council steering committee, Corona, Rebecca, Jeff and Heather for leading this effort but also to you in the audience to think about how this is applicable to you. Um, all right, let's dive into what these acronyms really mean. So the Microsoft Most Valuable Professional MVP, uh, that's the acronym. These are technology experts who passionately share their knowledge with the community. They are always on the cutting edge and have an unstoppable urge to get their hands on new exciting technologies. They have very deep knowledge of Microsoft products and services while also being able to bring together diverse platforms, products, and solutions to solve real world problems. Uh, MVPs make up a large global community of over 3,400 MVPs worldwide. So quite a nice audience, quite a nice community and leaders across 97 countries represented. And they're all driven by their passion, community spirit, and quest for knowledge. Above and all, in addition to their amazing technical abilities, MVPs are always willing to help. And that's what sets them apart. That's 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 what I why I enjoy working with them. Um, they collectively cover more than 50 languages. And this year, the community program has celebrated 30 years. What a milestone. And I also pulled up the spaces model that you might have seen uh, the CMX people talk about. For reference, the MVP community covers almost all of the uh, community types in the spaces model. So who are MVPs? I kind of touched up on, on that, but the Microsoft MVP award is our way of saying thanks to outstanding community leaders, the contributions MVPs make to the community, ranging from speaking engagements to social media posts, to writing books, helping each other online, have an inc incredible impact. And we award MVPs in award categories. You can kind of think of these essentially as technology areas aligned to Microsoft products and services. And the benefits MVPs receive as part of the program are being uh, having early access to our products and services, having early access to NDA information, um, having direct communication channels with our product teams and an invitation to the global MVP summit that I had the opportunity to attend this year. It was a hybrid uh, event at our HQ in Redmond in Washington state. Wonderful. 
one of the best events I've ever been to. I'm not biased, I promise. Um, so what does it take to be an MVP? Really three simple steps, be an expert, do what you love and let us know. So I think there's a long uh, checklist of things you need to do to become an MVP, but really step number two is uh, do what you love and it gets recognized and appreciated and we can tell. So program nomination is only, uh, you can get nominated into the program via a nomination by a Microsoft employee or community member that's already an MVP. And, you know, I, I say whether you're a recognized speaker, a technical content creator or a community leader, uh, give it a shot. All applying MVPs must uh, be an individual, not a corporate entity, and they must not be a Microsoft employee or current contractor. But I say there's a link on the bottom right. Give it a shot um, and check out the program if it's something relevant or applicable. So that's one of the programs we work with and that I work with. And the other one is the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. This is a um program that prepares students for future careers through opportunities to learn lead and share it empowers students to learn new tech skills using the microsoft learn platform leading their local and online communities by hosting events and offering guidance and sharing microsoft content to drive engagement and kind of build a circle of influence at their schools and uh, uh with their friends some of the highlights include i won't go through all of them but uh you know we're open to students globally all year round so if there's any students tuning in Highly recommend you check this out. There's a lot of benefits, including uh, software credits, M365 Azure, LinkedIn, Xbox credits, free access to training and certifications. So you see the link there. That's a short link we have, aka.ms slash student ambassadors. And you may ask why join the community. I say be a force for good locally and globally, you know, find your impact and amplify it. Applications are open all year, as I mentioned. Applying students must be at least 16 years of age be enrolled full-time in an accredited uh, institution, so a college, university, not be a entity, but be an individual person and not be a Microsoft employee or current contractor, similar for the MVP program. Um, there's this thing called Imagine Cup. It's more than just a competition. Over the past 25 year, 21 years, uh, we have had more than 1 million students participate and compete. And by competing, you can also accomplish learning together, making a difference. And what's cool is that the winners get a coaching session directly from our CEO, Satya Nadella, and prize money of $100,000. So that's that's really exciting. Um, some community resources that are available to our communities, and this is just a short list for sake of time. Uh, these include a uh, direct uh, student offer of providing access to free Azure services for university students and for student ambassadors of $100 credit. You don't need a credit card when you consume the services. And then you can also have an offer if you're a student through your university that provides you to hundreds of um, developer tools. We also have a platform called Microsoft Learn. It's our learning platform and it provides role and product focused documentation. This is where you would go to learn about Microsoft products and prepare for your exams and certifications. Uh, we then have also a community closely. This is actually directly at my team that we work with is the Microsoft Reactor. It's a space where you can learn new skills, meet new peers, and find career mentorship. Virtual events are running 24-7 here. This is where you can actually see a lot of our MVPs and student ambassadors presenting. Um, if there's any startups tuned in, I kind of wanted to touch up on this. Uh, I wanted to make sure you see our Founders uh, Hub offering, Microsoft for Startups Founders Hub platform. It is a digital platform. Uh, that brings together people, knowledge, and benefits uh, to help solve your startup challenges. We meet you at any level uh, with a commitment to propel your company forward as it grows. So it's open to all, no, no, no funding required. There's a lot of benefits there. And we also have the tech community. This is a generic public community anyone can be a part of. There's hundreds of thousands of community members here. And this is where you would go if you need help with any of our products. Um, then we have Microsoft Teams Free. This is a recently released uh, exciting new uh, app and it has a built-in community functionality. And I'll talk about this later in the presentation, but a cool resource. So, all right, you're still with me? Let's see the chat. Uh, have I not bore you with all the Microsoft stuff? Uh, looks like you're still with me. Give me a, th a thumbs up, someone. Maybe I bored you. Hi, Martin. I'm going to jump in. There's a little bit of feedback with your mic. Just wanted to let you know. All right. Well, I don't know. I'm using AirPods, but I'm thinking, what do we do? 
We can. Let me check. Just so we can have the best listening experience. All right. Rest of the presentation. Is awesome. This... Sounds great. All right. Better, right? Much better. All right. I switched it. So won't say anything about their pots, but I'm, I'm on the PC. PC mic here. Thanks for a thumbs up, everyone. Let's go. Thanks for Sue John. And jump in anyone. I know I talk fast, but jump in if I need to talk slower or if you can hear me, see me, you know, this, you know, make it interactive if you want. Um, all right. Well, now that I flooded you all these resources and information about uh, the community, the team I lead and the team I work with, uh, I want to get into the relatable part of the presentation and share with you what I have seen work and not work. And yeah, let's get into it. So before we dig deeper, let's pause and look at the 2023 CMX industry report. Has anyone seen this one? Um, are there any of you on the call that actually participated in it? Uh, if you didn't get a chance to see it, I'm sure Sujan or Luca will share the link in the chat. It's worth checking out, I recommend. Based on the 400 community professionals survey, there was one graph that really caught my attention and I wanted to put it in today's presentation. And it was the frustrations you and your fellow, me, us, community members are dealing with. And when I thought about a solid way to structure this presentation, and learnings, I wanted to tie back, anchor it to something tangible. Then I saw this graph of top frustrations on the report, and I thought it would be a perfect way to share with you how we dealt with many of these problems and what the learnings have been. Plus, it gives us a great flow of today's talk. And I don't know. I don't know. Um, I must call out whoever said, uh, you know, they have no frustrations. They get the Olympic medal. They should be here presenting. So 3% of you. But let's treat this as our problem statement for today. If you don't know what a problem statement is, you basically, it's a short, clear explanation of an issue or challenge that sums up what you want to change. And it will help us focus on the problem, why it's important to us and who it impacts. And hopefully it will help us come up with some creative uh, solutions to your problems. So the obstacles, the way your impediments are your path. Whether Marcus Aurelius said this or Ryan Holiday in his book that's titled with the same title, uh, I want to point out that each one of you and each one of your teams has different impediments on your way to building community success. And that's okay. Embrace the suck and let the obstacles show you uh, what needs to be improved. Each one of us has different, uh, different struggles and frustrations, but that's the beauty. That's, that's, that's your answer actually right there, right in front of you. Um, so let's talk about you, the community professional. It all starts with you. You know, this is a people business. Working with people is no walk in the park. Uh, but ultimately, it is a part of everyone's life. We all interact and work together as a society. You really must enjoy working with people. And to a certain extent, you are a socialite in the community space. You as a person, it brings you unexplained rewards when you uh, interact with people. Uh, it's just unexplainable. You're just happy and you're happy when your community is happy. So leading with empathy, this is key. You never know what is going on in someone's life or the person you're interacting with, what background and culture they come from and what they have gone through in life, what their unique diversity brings to the table. So just be kind of nice when interacting with them and how you can make, and always think about how you can make things, how you can do things, how you can say yes, instead of how things are not possible. So know your product and service. It's great that you are a rock star community professional, but you must know and understand the core of your company's product and or service. The community often speaks a language that is related and centered to your product and service. So to better help serve your community, you need to understand yourself what it is that is your company's product. And the best way to do that is to take some training and at least have the fundamentals of how your service and product works. So for those of you in the technical companies and technical communities, being technical is an advantage. So take the time to upskill yourself and ask for help if you, if you don't know where to start internally. Uh, networking. There are not, uh, these are not in any order when I thought about these, but if I were to pick top three, I'd say networking. Uh, and we hear this often and often. And I remember hearing this in high school, university, when I started my corporate career, just networking. You keep hearing it, but you're always like, well, what does it really mean? But it really means the more people you know, the better. Don't just collect Pokemons and meet people for the sake of, you know, adding them on LinkedIn, but more so meet them and take the time to know them a little bit. One fact about them, who they are, what they do, 
And it comes down to earning favors and helping each other. So when you know them, they know you, you can offer each other favors and help each other. For example, uh, you could know, you should know multiple of your product group uh, managers and engineers that are behind the product or service your community is built around. Together, you can work in helping each other improve the product um, and make the community happier. Communication is key. Pay attention to how you speak, write, and interact with your community members, your teammates, and those around you. Set proper expectations, avoid making assumptions, and always be kind and respectful. Always stick to your values and company culture. Always say hello and thank you in your email, IM, or voice communication. Don't be lazy, even if it's the 20th email. Hello, thank you. Multi-role. Community creators are like large multi-project managers, mini CEOs. So you you manage people, content marketing, support, um, events. It's a lot of work and it helps if you have the basic skills and it also helps uh, to being a leader and nurturing other leaders. Um, be confident and trust in your vision and decisions and also be organized. It's important to be organized and timely. Uh, when you promise things, uh, deliverables to your community, uh, you need to organize, Organize yourself so that you write it down, remember it, and follow up on it. Um, show gratitude. I'd say gratitude is a big one, maybe my top three. Always be thankful and appreciative of your community members. Many of them do what they do because of their passion and love. They do it for free. They love it. They go above and beyond their daily lives to contribute to the success of you, your community, the product. So, so the least you can do is show appreciation. Um, I mean, shouldn't even be mentioning this. Um, I mapped the community professional traits from the slide before to some tangible and actionable practices. So it really starts with hiring. When you hire, um, pick the right community professionals, some like-minded individuals, but also some that will push your buttons. Um, people that want to work in the social space. Leading with empathy. Each of us, no matter what level, role, or function, plays an active role on, in helping innovate uh, for inclusion. So our communities inspire our progress uh, to do better here. And so it's important you strive to create an environment that brings the power of diversity to life. Uh, you know, knowing your product, again, I mentioned, take trainings, learnings, meet with product groups, take the time. Networking, network with your community, uh, also network internally in your company and be an advocate for your community. Maybe if you're in a big company like myself with 200,000 employees, maybe there's people that never heard of this community. So you want to advocate on behalf of it internally as well. Um, and offer one-on-ones to people you meet along the way to meet them, take the time to meet them, especially your community members. And I'll talk about that a little more later. Um, communication, I touched up on that. You know, you are a multi-role dude and dudas. So master your inner CEO and put on a sorting hat for your various roles, tasks, and responsibilities. I'd also suggest you think your team is structured in a way where it's structure, structured into community professionals, business product owners, uh, operations, communications, event planning, and, and the dev and support team behind uh, your platform. It's important everyone understands the org chart and that the escalation process is clear. And again, show gratitude, perhaps by showing uh, it in community benefit ways, but also just by a simple thank you. Maybe you notice in the upper right-hand corner, it's really it's really tiny right there. Um, I, um, I copy-pasted the frustrations that are uh, resolved by, that we slowly resolve and unpack as we go through the slides. Um, so if you put everything in place, it should help you avoid negativity or toxic behavior, you know, and I, with the proper communication and a code of conduct in place and difficult to maintain a consistent brand. If you have a community council or everyone's on the same page and you know everyone from the product groups, you can deliver a consistent message. Difficulty to work effectively with others in the org. Again, you take the time to meet them. Um, that's important. I see Toshi mentioned they use Yammer and give kudos to each other. Awesome. Right there, Toshi, right there with you. Um, what else is here? You know, we have lack of cross-functional collaboration. That's that's touches up on it and not enough staff. I think this one is if you get organized and you use your tools properly, you will be able to eliminate at least the lack of enough staff. Um, so I promise this presentation will be about how to continually engage your community as it seems to be a frustration as we see in the upper right hand corner, difficulty to consistently engage 
members. This was number one frustration on the community industry report. And I'd say distribute the community population amongst your team equally, whether that be based on geography, locale, region, language, service, or product type, allocate resources accordingly. Simplify your channels, you know, whether you use Teams or Slack, Discord, a global team, make create one global team that has everyone in it, along with some sub-channels for relatable products and services. Maybe create a different team owned by your community professionals for how they divided the community. And then create a team or distribution list on email owned by the product group members. Um, unless you have them already in the global team. So make it simple, make things simple. Community calls, organize community calls every month or every week or every other week, how you set it up, but at least once a month. This is, and at least for an hour. This is where your community gets to come together and ask questions, interact and hear about your program updates. You know, don't get lazy over time as well. You know, this community has been around 30 years. That means, uh, what is it, 12 months times 30, you, you get the point, never stop. Um, partner with your product group. So to host regular product updates and feedback sessions with community members. We do this at Microsoft. Each product group uh, has multiple product group interaction calls every week to meet with the MVPs and work with them on the products and share with them the features and get feedback. And this is an opportunity for your community to further interact and impact your products and get engaged. Offer one-on-ones, as I said, don't onboard your community, but welcome them. And uh, we have thousands of members, but I have a one-on-one -on -one with each new member. They can book the time with me and I'll talk about that in the tools section. And I take the time to meet them, 15 minutes. And also the current members in the program, they always have the option to book time with me, open office hours, coffee time, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, I'll touch up on that a little later, but invite your community to events. So to first party or third party events. So if your company organizes events, your community should always be a part of those events. Even if it's 10 departments down the hallway and they're releasing something cool, you should think about how your community can be a part of it, especially if it's a first party event, meaning your company's organizing. But also um, share a list of opportunities, kind of the middle top one here of engagement such as third-party events, request to speak at events, looking for subject matter experts, event help. Keep your community up to date on what is happening around the industry and the space, uh, the market, not just with your first-party events, but the other, other events. Um, connect with other communities. So this one I talked touched upon a lot, but it's if you have more than two communities in, internally, uh, you know, I was just reading Daniel's comment exactly. If you're a David Spinks newsletter subscriber, I, I got that thought from from there. So that's how he wrote wrote it. Um, so you know, credit to him on that um, welcoming. Connect with other communities. As I said, if you have two communities in in um, at your company or you're managing two communities, think of ways to interconnect them. It will create synergies. We all love that word, right? But uh, for example, our MVPs uh, mentor our student ambassadors. Uh, empower. This is a big one. It's also from our mission statement. Empower community members to be leaders and advocates. Support them in setting up their own user groups, meetups, events, community-led activities. Provide them with the tools and support they need to further create their own communities, such as using Teams for Communities. So skilling opportunities. Organize hackathons, enable your community to upskill. So what you, just like I mentioned, the Microsoft Learn platform, if you have a platform where your community can go and upskill, perhaps they want to change focus. They've been always focused on Azure, but they now want to be focused on, uh, you know, power apps. Um, you, you can send them to a platform where they can take that path. And that's important and offer them maybe benefits in terms of credit vouchers or exam vouchers, et cetera. Host an annual event, just like Summit hosts their event, Host an event. It's the best thing you can do. One of the number one uh, recognized benefits of any community. And make it hybrid. Not everyone can go, so it has to be inclusive. And hybrid is the future, but a host one. And again, recognize, just like Toshi mentioned, whether it's a simple thank you or it's your benefits. And call out members in your blogs and newsletters. Uh, yeah, so new member engagement. 
If you were to do, you know, the top frustration again in the upper right hand corner, it's difficult to attract new members. I would say there's a place and time for every community. So some, com some communities may eventually evaporate and close. But if it's an active and thriving community and you've taken all the steps you've done, just like I mentioned on the two, three slides before, and you've successfully engaged your current community, there's going to be word of mouth. And if you're recruiting for new members, focus on your high priorities and products and services that align to your business uh, goals as a company. Seek out underrepresented audiences. There's so many of them out there that you're not aware of. So go out there and do your homework. Um, Advocate for your community internally. I mentioned this, but always mention like when I meet someone at Microsoft, oh, have you heard of MVPs? Have you heard of student ambassadors? I'm almost, uh, I'm almost uh, annoying there. Let's see, Matthew, what you're saying here. Exactly. Exactly, Matt. Uh, Scott, I appreciate the, the compliments, Scott, here. That's, that's great. That's great to hear it from someone that's, uh, that's right there from the source. Appreciate that, Scott. Uh, and remember to teach people something along the way. All right. We're almost in our third part of the presentation, so we're, we're tracking along right on time. Um, this is a, a couple of years ago, I took the CMX Academy MBA course. Recommend you to take it if you haven't. And one slide stuck with me forever. And it's, I can't get it out of my head. And when I sleep, I think about it. It's, it's a little, it's a little uh, scary. I would say no measurable value equals no budget equals no community. Couldn't have said it better. Um, you guessed it right. We're about to dive into your favorite topic of metrics. But um, if you can't show how your community delivers value and impacts your company, um, then you will run into the frustration that was mentioned in the frustration list of your getting the attention of your executives, getting the budget. Um, so without a measurable impact, you will not get the support and resources to continually and successfully run your community. Um, that is correct, Scott. It really helps to realize the value um, and, the, and, the, and the time invested and resources into an active community. Um, know your company's business goal. I'm gonna simplify this a little bit because this is a big topic and we could dive into each one of these topics for hours. And I kind of wanted to just share with you the, the, the experiences we've seen, as I mentioned, kind of give it a little bit of a framework. So. Know your company's business goal, whatever it may be. There may be multiple. Um, you know, now that you know your community type and you know your company's business goal, use a strategic plan planning framework. At Microsoft, we use the objective and key results, OKRs, uh, but there's many methodologies out there. This will help you outline how you will conceptually uh, approach your plan and it will help your team understand why it matters and how you uh, and your team can actively participate in achieving your company business goal. Um, if you, if you don't know your community type, then identify it along with objectives. So to share here with you a couple from our uh, community, and I see Christina was asking this question. Uh, you know, we strive for customers, partners, and community members to discover great content. We want them to engage and grow their skills, and this will in turn lead to improving product experience for everyone. When it comes to some further KPIs or goals or metrics, unfortunately, I can't uh, dive deeper into them. It's confidential, but this is at a highlight. And I bring up the spaces model again. The spaces model helps you identify your community type and objective. And now figure out how your community impacts that goal and how you can measure progress towards that goal. Start by identifying actions, AKA tactics, you and your team will take to impact the overarching goal. So what are the things your team does? What tools do you use? What data do you look at? What data do you report on? That you can show that you're impacting your company's goal and ask yourself, can I measure it? Um, how do I measure it? You know. And here's some examples of how we show community impact. We measure the health of our community. And you see the frustrations again on the upper right here corner mentioned, you know, people don't have the data. We'll talk about that in the tools section, lack of budget, difficulty to get by and, and hard to quantify. But if you, if you put this framework in place, you'll be able to avoid these frustrations and get those answers in place. So measuring the health of your community, that's what we do. Visually reporting on the data we have, Power BI, that's when we use the tool. There's many tools out there. Tracking active users and user signups, trials, 
product feedback collected, connecting your community data to your customer data. That's a frequent uh, kind of buzzword in, in, in this industry. Telling a success story, painting a beautiful success story like my climbing story at the beginning is what counts and gets remembered. And always putting in place related uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility goals. Um, all right, community tools. We have about 10 more minutes since we started a little later here, but we're tracking right on time. So this is the last third part of the presentation. We're going to talk about tools. And again, I'll start again with a slide from CMX industry report. I took the time to highlight with the reddish boxes, the areas we fall into here at Microsoft. We have five plus tools we use, but we are happy to, happy to use that many tools because each tool has its purpose and they really work well together. For, for our automation data aggregation, I mentioned we use Power BI. You guessed it right for our community interaction. What do we use? Microsoft Teams. And for the last question, and we kind of fall all over the place, it depends. Um, so here's a little bit of a showcase of the tools we use. So majority of the tools we use to run our day-to-day -day and our community are on the left. That's our Microsoft 365 productivity suite. Uh, I'm sure you know the logos, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneDrive, OneNote, Bookings, Forms, SharePoint, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, Stream, et cetera. Um, and I'll touch up on some of these a little later. Then we use Microsoft Dynamics as our CRM. That's where we have our community data. We use Microsoft 365 Copilot, uh, or we will be using, uh, this is a new offering. I'll touch up on this later. LinkedIn for social, Microsoft Azure for our web services and our internal DevOps. And Teams, of course, is very popular and we use it predominantly for everything. Um, let me check the chat quickly. Yes, good story sell. So communicate and interacting with your community. Again, this is also a little bit of a tip for you, not just a sales, sales point for Microsoft technology. So email, you can use any email provider. You would generally, when and why would you use email? You would use it for program announcements, support requests from your community, distribution lists you have in place, newsletters, sending out newsletters, scheduling uh, your events and calendar appointments. I think we all got here today via email. Uh, then we took the link to CMX. You will use it for asks and reminders. Uh, also, use a one-on-one -on -one tool. I touched upon this several times today. So something like Microsoft Bookings, um, you may know Calendly is an alternate option. And this is good for you to welcome new members, host open, open, open office uh, coffee breaks, and it's automated. So you can be asleep, your community member can book time with you because it's linked to your calendar, so it knows your availability. They can reschedule. This has this is one of my favorite tools. Tips again, never mention, never forget hello and thank you. Color code your uh, color code your calendar. Um, this is big. Won't dive too much into it. To do lists, stay organized. You know everyone has their own system. I use OneNote for reminders and asks. Automate as much as possible with Power Automate. Always have security and privacy in mind, especially with your community data and have accessibility in mind, meaning your slides should be accessible. For example, it would have helped today if I had better color coded slides or if I had subtitles. So when the recording gets posted, there will be an auto caption and you'll be able to watch it with subtitles. Um, messaging communication platform, our platform of choice is Microsoft Teams. We use it for program updates, personalized one-on-one -on -one communication, video calls, presentations, events, hosting large events, first-party events, file and resource storage for the community members to access recordings, networking and relationship building, mentorship, recognition, welcoming new members, uh, reminding of code of conduct, and some tips on how to use it again. Hello and thank you. Code of conduct, accessibility in mind for note-taking, security privacy, and posting summaries and recordings. Um, this is cool, Microsoft 365 Copilot. If you're following the tech scene of all the AI innovations, um, it's integrated into Microsoft 365 in two ways. First, it works alongside you, embedded in the apps millions of people use every day. So now you can be more collaborative in Teams. This is going to change and revolutionize how we uh, work with communities. Um, you'll be able to use the AI to be your sidekick your co-pilot and to help you optimize, organize. Um, so a little bit on that topic. So community sites, we have a front-facing site, the mvp.microsoft.com. So if you have a front-facing site, 
it really helps because you can share public information. You can, uh, especially if it's self-service, community members can log in and self-service their activities, their uh, NDAs, their, uh, they see the code of conduct, um, any information they need. They can, uh, we have multiple websites you see here listed. Microsoft Learn, they can take training, uh, they can um, create their own user groups, for example, the Power Platform user groups. Um, and, and it's important to connect all of these on the back end. Um, so Microsoft Teams for Communities, I wanted to touch up on this product. We have about five minutes left here. Uh, I want to end at 50. So I would say this is a really cool tool that's been released. This is more so for organizing, for our community members, organizing their own communities. I use this also in my personal life, but it offers messaging, offers events set up, offers safety and uh, kind of avoiding toxic behavior. You see an example of a community that's uh, been put together around gardening and you can engage your members by, um, you can have multiple communities, you can uh, create posts, post views, kind of the classic functionality of any messaging app, but more with a community centric focus. And you can host events, you can meet online, um, and you can also set up different things, share QR codes, share links. My favorite feature is when I use the app, it aggregates, you see on the upper left there, upper left there, any photos you put in the app or any, any events you scheduled or links, everything gets aggregated in those tabs. So I have a quick way of finding it. Um, and there's different ways to manage it as a, as a, uh, as a community manager. And what's nice about it is anyone can join with a QR link or a, uh, Microsoft account. It's free. So this is a great way, uh, that we offer our community to go and create their own communities and, you know, classic functionality. So. Four minutes left here, community operations. So this is kind of on the back end. I wanted to touch up on this a little bit. Make sure your back end is tied to your front end, that you have access to your community data, that you can report on it and visualize data with a data aggregation tool such as Power BI. Internally, we use Azure DevOps to plan smarter, collaborate better, and to do project management. We actually use DevOps as a community team. I can't, I can't tell you how awesome it is. It's been great. So. I, I was kind of, I had a steep learning curve, but then I, I uh, really fell in love with the product and it keeps us all on track. And there's a lot of potential for AI, AI integration. So for the tool summary, um, use the tools you have available. Now, don't worry, because I showed you tons of tools, doesn't mean you need to go and get them, but use the tools you have available and do the best you can with them or ask for more tools if you convince your, uh, leadership with your metrics and your um, community value. Automate as much as possible. Um, and you see, I put this, the frustrations on the bottom right. So if you do these things, you'll avoid these frustrations. Rely on tools and programs of other teams. So maybe there's other teams in the org that have these tools and programs. See how you can work together. Uh, secure data privacy always in mind. Clearly defined process and start thinking about AI, get AI ready. Think about how you will leverage AI um, to help you do your work as a community professional. So problem statement, crossed out a bunch of these. I would say, wasn't sure how to address other and frustrate, no frustrations. So I could maybe add on more frustrations, but not take them away. So key takeaways for today, um, you know, despite some recent economic downturns, the community industry has been able to weather the storm and it's here to stay. So give yourself a pat on the back. Community teams and tools are about to run laps around marketing tools. <laughs> With the influx of AI powered uh, technology, I think executives are starting to realize the value of community and are looking for ways to scale the human touch. So community professionals are about to live through a revolution in this space. Um, you know, if you stick to empathy and relationship building, no AI will replace you, no chat GPT. If you stick to inclusion, you won't be replaced. Stay organized and productive, this is important. Always deliver quickly. The more time someone waits, for example, if you, if you go to a party or a wedding and you wait for the wedding photos for three months, it's not relevant anymore. Um, Cross-collaboration. 
collaborate with everyone. Security data, data privacy in mind, as I keep saying, empower your community with your tools and think about AI again, get AI ready. And finally, be grateful for all the hard work your community brings to the table and for you and your team, you know, uh, and also have some fun. So with that being said, there's some upcoming events. The Microsoft uh, Teams community team will actually host an event with CMX two weeks exactly from this time. And I have my team Ma teammate Mabel on the call here, Mabel. She will also be part of the session. This will be cool if you want to get your hands on on this app or want to provide us feedback, we will be grateful. So that there's our short link, but you'll find it on the CMX website. And a um, big thank you to you. I think it was, uh, at least I had a lot of fun. Um, let's keep the conversation going. If you scan this QR code, we put a community together. I saw the link be shared in the chat. This is where we can discuss this topic, test the app and get to know each other better and see where it goes. So um, that's all from me. Thanks again. Sue John, back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Martin. We have so much engagement in the chat and the Q and A. And um, that was just a really insightful, insightful presentation. It's so just a reminder, this is being recorded and we will be sharing this with everyone um, post event. Um, I also have a number of questions in our Q&A tab here. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to submit them. You'll see the Q&A button below. But why don't we go ahead and get started, Martin? We'll go straight on in and I'll go ahead and ask you some questions on behalf of our audience here. So okay, go ahead. yeah, our first question, I'll combine the two because he sent a few, is from BJ. And he asks, how do you keep engagement in the community, specifically a community of a thousand plus people spread across the globe? And do you set up community calls um, in different time zones? How do you manage a large community like this? Yeah, that's a good question. I touched up on it in the middle section of the presentation a lot. I would say uh, the way we do it is we actually have a team of community program managers all, all around the world. So we do scale across the time zones and we do it locally. We divide our community based on region and location and language. So we we're able to scale. Um, I would say if you have a team, then do that. Um, you will get them engaged. It helps if you know if you're in the region, you know, the language, you know, the culture, the customs and you are there physically, you can maybe engage more often also in person. If you don't have such, uh, such, you know, if you're not that fortunate and there's one or two of you and you're still covering the global region, I'd say, yeah, wake up at night sometimes and it's worth it to also align with their time zones. Um, thank you. All right, our next question is, any recommendations on how to attract employees to increase their particip participation in communities? So specifically, Nowadays in the tech industry and after all the layoffs, where reduced teams are asked to do more with less, uh, community may not seem like a priority for the other teams within your company. So how do you attract them to engage and be a part of the community? Yeah, great question again. I think it again comes down to being able to showcase the value of your community uh, and, and its impact. Um, you know, let's say you're hosting a first party event that's run by that team that doesn't want to engage with community and they, or they just don't have the, yeah, they just don't want to engage. They're hosting a big event and you're releasing your new bicycle. So you have an event and if you're able to showcase this team running this event that all the traffic came from your community and their followers, then you will get the seat at the table of whoever's part of that team or the executive saying, hey, what did they do? How come all the audience and all the views are coming from the community versus our, our bicycle customers? So that's an example. You just really need to showcase the impact the community has and what it brings. Um, so it's, it's again, a big open, uh, open ended question. Yeah, but right. a little, and, little example. And as you mentioned, um, measuring impact, um, this is the age old question, but it's always so interesting to hear how every community does this. But what are your OKRs and how are what metric are you using to measure your success for the community? Yeah, I touched up on that. It's it's how much we're able to drive uh, engagement to our first party sites, and this would be 
uh, you know, to all the learning, to all of our products. And then how engaged are these visitors? How engaged are they with our community and on our sites? And then what, how do we Im improve the product? So what is the product feedback they bring? Because we can track that. And then uh, we're able to say, okay, thanks to doing this, we have uh, this many visitors to the site. This is how they were engaged. And this is the end, end product uh, feedback. So we can make it better again for those same people. Yeah, you talked about feedback. Can you go a little bit deeper in terms of the process of how you handle customer feedback? Is it welcomed by your stakeholders? Does your community feel heard? Can you go a little bit deeper into that portion? Yeah, for sure. And I see those questions. And I'm sorry I was in the chat. I wasn't in the Q&A because as I mentioned last time, it'd be great if Q&A and chat were above each other in the, in the tool. But uh, um, I could see both of them. So great question. And it kind of ties back in. Um, really, the program was... Uh, founded 30 years ago by the Microsoft product group. They wanted product feedback and they wanted it uh, from the community, not from the customers and partners because the customers and partners have their own channels of feedback. So we wanted a space where the community can give us feedback. And it's very similar kinds of tools we use where uh, either they use the tools and rep reporting methodologies to report on bugs, uh, feature upgrades, et cetera. So that's more of like they do it on their own. Or as I mentioned, we host product group calls. Uh, we have, you know, 40, 50 different, uh, we actually have 20 something product categories and then, uh, or tech, uh, tech areas, but then we have hundreds within each uh, area. And all of those individual products, they host their calls with the community members. So that's why we have the program. That's why it's nomination only. And it's an ambassador community. It's, it's very tightly integrated. We know all the product group individuals, we work with them to help set up these calls and bring in the community members. So it's like hands-on. So that's how we track it in those calls. And it's usually, you know, manually tracked if it's a call, it has to get typed and written by somehow. I'm sure AI is gonna improve that going forward uh, with all kinds of cool features in Copilot and Teams, it will be able to summarize meetings um, and chats and notes. So yeah, it's gonna get easier to collect that feedback. I don't know if that answers the question. It does. And it's interesting to hear about the synergy between the different departments within Microsoft, whether it's product or, you know, customer care or, you know, customer support. Um, yeah. We have one question Christos is asking in an e-commerce environment. Can the community and the customer care or customer support departments, can they synergize? Um, and I'm curious to hear if you have an experience of how those two departments worked together with supporting your community or supporting your audience? Yeah, it depends on the type of community you have. If you have a support type community and you use Chorus or some type of online forum uh, where anyone can go and ask a question. For example, I had a, I had a Reoling camera in my front at my front door and um, my Reoling switch just exploded and burned. And I went on the Reoling community and I was like, oh, I'm gonna be a community member and ask a question and I got, about five answers from the employees of Reolink on the on the forum, but I also got about six uh, from the community members, which were actually better because they were like quicker and more honest. And that was, and that's a similar experience you would find at Microsoft. Uh, you would go to any of the tech community uh, sites, and um, their customers or anyone in the world can ask a question around a product or support, and they'll get an answer, and they'll get an answer from Microsoft employees product engineers, et cetera, or they will get an answer from a community member because they're also part of that forum. And they, they have a little tag that says that they're an MVP. Um, this is a little different from a customer opening a support case, which goes directly to a customer engineer. That's the community doesn't see that. It's not part of that, but that's also because of data and confidentiality. I appreciate the distinction there and appreciate that. Our time has flown by today, but I did want to mention that in our chat, I just pinned the link to join Martin's Microsoft community. And there you can um, go ahead and move forward with uh, interacting with others in the same community um, and learning more about teams there. But Martin, I wanted to give you the last minute or so just to share any final words to our audience today, literally from all around the globe. Um, which is super exciting. But anything else you'd like to say to all of our community builders out there who's tuning in or watching the recording? Yeah, thanks for joining today. I appreciate your time, especially with so many uh, diverse um, members joining in from all around the world. 
Uh, thank you for taking the time. If there's any more questions that are unanswered, I see a couple and there's a couple I'm really afraid of. I'm glad you didn't get to those. Uh, I'll be happy to answer them in on my LinkedIn or in the community we set up on Teams. Really thankful for the invite. It's, it was an honor and, and a beautiful opportunity. Um, hopefully you'll have me back one day and uh, yeah, have a great day, everyone. Awesome. Thank you everyone so much. And we'll see you at the next masterclass. Have a great rest of your day or your evening. See you then. Bye. See you. Bye.